Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zard of Chess channel and welcome to an incredible game that I found on the official computer chess rating list website the shortened CCRL. We have here Stockfish against another top engine Seer in a beautiful opening that Alpha Zero in the past really left to destroy. Today we'll see a beautiful sharp tactical game in the Queen's Indian defense. And the Queen's Indian defense is really really tricky opening. There are so many opportunities for both sides but as I said Alpha Zero was really something else uh, back in 2008 when uh, Alpha Zero played the match against the Stockfish, Alpha Zero really destroyed many times uh, Stockfish in the uh, in the Queen's Indian defense with immortal tactical sequences all over the board. And this game is similar like that. You see now how Stockfish this is dismantling, destroying the Queen's Indian defense in a really brutal, sharp tactical way. So let's see now the game with the white pieces. The fish open with move D4. This engine seer or his response was E6. We have now the move C4. Knight to F6. Knight to F3 and after move B6 we have reached now the Queen's in the defense. Knight to C3 we have now the so-called Kasparov variation so uh, this um, this is a more I think positional approach. Uh, the move G3 leads into more I think tactical lines. Knight to C3 uh, can be met also now with move Bishop to B4 but basically what both engines both players uh, uh, are doing in the beginning they're battling for the e4 square so every move that you see knight to c3 knight to f6 is battling for the e4 square bishop to b7 bishop to b4 pinning the knight on c3 is also an opportunity to battle for the e4 square so as i said so far it's just a, a big struggle for one particular uh, center square so in the game bishop to b7 a3 preventing now this idea bishop to b4 we have now the move d5 by uh here and now c takes d5 knight to d5 and you see See, black many times doesn't want to recapture here with the pawn. Uh, if you pick up here, of course, um, the pawn with the pawn, uh, then of course you're blocking out your light square bishop. Okay, you could have maybe some opportunities to hop with the knight on e4, but uh, this light square bishop is suddenly not a good piece anymore. So that's why knight to d5, knight takes d5 for white is not a possibility, um, I think, because then again, bishop to d5 uh, will happen. So another piece will come into the game, even if you play something like e4. Knight to c3, b takes c2, then you lose just the pawn, so it's also not working. So you have to be careful also from white's perspective what you're doing. So that's why Stockfish played the move e3 here, not the move e4. First playing the solid structure in the center of the board and developing of course the light square bishop to d3 where it could be very very dangerous in the, uh, in the next couple of moves. So bishop to e7, bishop to b5 by Stockfish. It's a provocative move of course the bishop will not stay there forever uh, but this is a teasing move of waiting black to play the move c6. Putting again the pawn in front of the bishop, not allowing this bishop to be activated and now creating also several dark square problems here on d6 and on c7. So in the game bishop to d3, now uh, the bishop is on a natural square on the most aggressive square on the board. So knight takes c3, we have b takes c3, so uh, still white as the solid structure but the downside a little bit now for white is that uh, the bishop on c1 is a little bit... Um, paralyzed by its own pawn structure many pawns are on dark square so the bishop will have to find another way into the game kingside casting kingside casting c5 now black is trying to break the central control here this uh, very nice pawn chain in the center we have now the move e4 uh, advancing the pawn controlling now four squares on the other side of the board with the pawns we have queen to c7 and now queen to e2 uh, Stockfish gets the queen from the first rank is now trying to include the rook on uh, f1 somewhere maybe on d1 if possible even on e1 but the rook needs now to play in the game so in the game we have now uh, rook to d8 played by this engine here and now a very very interesting idea here by Stockfish rook to e1 I expected maybe rook to d1 um that could happen immediately rook to e1 is in my opinion even more aggressive approach because the bishop is a little bit loose on the e file if something gets cleared on the e file then you could maybe uh get attacked uh, stockfish is basically preparing here an aggressive breakthrough with move d5 very very tricky idea so in the game knight to c6 by uh seer we have now d5 immediately stockfish is not waiting here very well stuff look at this after e takes d5 uh we have now e takes d5 we have rook to d5 it's a sort of a temporarily pawn sacrifice but stockfish has now a really really great attacking ideas in mind stockfish plays now brilliant knight to g5 and uh, let's see we have decoyed the rook 
to the fifth rank but now the rook is not on the back rank so that's why you cannot even pick up here uh the knight on um uh, g5 because you get simply queen to e8 you get checkmated of course the same thing happens if you play rook to g5 will simply pick up uh with the bishop you cannot take with the bishop again you get checkmated on e8 so that's why in order to stay in the game black needs not to play the move g6 but uh, as i said in the beginning the move rook to d5 is just only a temporary uh, pawn sacrifice now stockfish finds a brilliant move plays now the beautiful knight takes f7 really really wild stuff so after move uh knight to f7 if you play king to f7 this wouldn't be good because of course then you get pinned bishop to c4 you can maybe just try to cover but look at this queen to f3 you lose the size of material and the game is over here for white so that's why after move knight to f7 the only move that is helping out black here is to move rook to h5 so so far seer is playing the only defensive moves rook to h5 is also of course threatening a checkmate here on h2 against white king so that's why um stockfish has to play not the move g3 but now rook to f8 again so you see seer is also including new pieces into the defense which is also a good choice because uh many of us i think would pick up now the king uh, uh the knight with the king but uh, of course the rook is not on d5 anymore there's simply no pin but again this is not working uh, although you cannot pin now the rook on d5 now the bishop can come into the game here on f4 the queen drops back still we deliver a check you have to play something like king to g7 we include this other piece into the game look at this all of the pieces are playing now in beautiful beautiful harmony you can maybe try something like queen to h3 this is just really the suggested line now by stockfish 15 uh, i'm just showing you uh the best continuation now for both sides look at this white play simply f3 queen to f5 and now bishop to e6 we chase away the queen and now when the rook comes here on the seventh rank i think this could be already already very very messy here for uh for black so as i said sometimes we should be careful what what we're trying to do what kind of a tactical sequence we're going into because if we cannot calculate everything i'm not sure if i would recommend you maybe to pick up some uh, loose pieces like in this particular case knight to f7 you see first of all you cannot take it now even after move g3 still you cannot take it that's why the seer engine played not move rook to f8 bishop to c4 stockfish is lining up the bishop against the king we have now rook to f7 uh the seer engine is trying at least grab two minor pieces for the rook which is a good choice uh we have bishop to f4 stockfish is not rushing so far uh to taking uh, to take out the rook first kicks away the queen queen to c8 rook from a to d1 again including more pieces we can always take uh this rook whenever we want so far the most more important thing is to include more pieces into the game so queen to h3 again uh, threatening some checkmates here on, on the second rank so that's why f3 uh, rook to f5 and now again a very important move here by uh, stockfish queen to e6 not allowing uh, this move rook to f4 rook to f4 i think would be very really devastating if you don't play something like i don't know queen to e6 then with rook to f4 g takes f4 i think the king gets more and more exposed so that's why queen to e6 very nice move if rook to f4 happens then the queen on h3 is hanging really very really tricky move here by stockfish 15 so in the game g5 so see here it's also battling he's trying somehow to defend this position because stockfish is storming later here really really in a brutal way after move g5 we have bishop to f1 the queen gets attacked so see stockfish even leaves now uh here the attack against the rook on f7 we have queen to h5 and now g4 we have a beautiful fork against um, uh, the, the uh, rook and the queen in order to stay in the game the seer engine has to again offer another rook uh for uh to to be traded off because after rook takes f6 uh, rook takes f6 now of course stockfish can also take out the queen on h5 but now of course rook to f4 leads now into this end game in which uh white has a rook for two minor pieces but um uh, again the activity on the seventh rank is something i think that bothers now uh black in the continuation of the game so that's why stockfish plays immediately the move rook to d7 and i'm, I'm not sure how many of us would be even satisfied with this position with the white pieces many of us would still struggle battle many of us would not do know what to do here in the game but rook to d7 is the obvious move 
lining up the rook on the seventh rank and now many pieces are hanging also this bishop is twice attacked uh, by uh, by the both of this rook so in the game bishop to a8 we have rook to c7 uh, played by stockfish we have rook to f8 and now h6 this move i really like because Again, Stockfish doesn't want to take. Stockfish is not rushing here to take anything. Uh, still, the pawn is hanging. Still, maybe we can trade off uh, the rook for... Uh, give up the rook for two minor pieces. Still, the bishop can be included into the game. But the move h6 is not allowing the king to breathe. That's a different story now. Beautiful, beautiful uh, positional move here by, uh, by Stockfish. So, in the game, we have king to h8. And now, another brilliant move and that's probably the move that i really like the most this is really a move from another dimension look what stockfish is doing stockfish plays the move rook to e6 although although you can immediately even take out the bishop on e7 and still white is fine but rook to e6 is so much more beautiful because it forces uh the pawn move on c4 because we can also take, I think, here the knight. And also we can take out maybe the knight twice. So many pieces are hanging. Still we can also pick up the uh, bishop on e7. But the downside about the move c4 is that you are placing now your pawns on light course. And now uh, you see this uh, seer engine is trying to get somehow with the bishop out of the game. Maybe also attack uh, the pawn on a3. Trying somehow to survive this attack. For instance, uh, bishop to d8 in this position. Uh, in order to attack the rook that's really the beauty about this move rook to e6 look what happens if you play bishop to d8 then the stunner is rook to f7 this is really wild stuff because if you play rook to f7 then you get checkmated on e8 you have to even drop back here to g8 but now look at this bishop to d3 is coming and there's simply no defense here against this uh, weakness on h7 really really immortal immortal move rook to e6 so see, you cannot play bishop to f8 you have to create some kind of spaces here for for uh, the bishop bishop f6 of course is also not possible look at rook to f6 uh rook to c8 so this was in my opinion really uh the most beautiful move in this in this epic game so that's why c4 which is not a problem maybe for for black that black will, will lose immediately the pawn but the most important thing about the move c4 is that the pawn is now on the light square and on the light square the pawn can be attacked by the light square bishop it's a different story now when the pawns are on dark squares um, then it's not so obvious uh, how white is going to make progress you know from c4 look at this rook to e7 now stockfish is taking rook to e7 rook to e7 and we have now uh pretty much equal material but of course the difference is now that stockfish has a much much better activity and of course the king is paralyzed this is a weak pawn this is a weak pawn and now black is even forced to push the pawn on b5 again on a light square that's now the downside uh, for black so in the game rook to a7 obviously uh, we have now bishop to f3 also uh the seer engine takes out now another pawn but now rook to a6 not allowing rook to f6 rook to f6 it happens if you lose this uh annoying pawn then maybe even black can survive this attack but rook to a6 stunning beautiful move here by by the fish so g4 we have rook to b6 and you see now with the move king to g8 uh the seer engine is trying somehow to get the king back into the game but stockfish is not allowing that plays now the brilliant move a4 uh because after b takes a4 bishop to c4 and stockfish is saying get back in the corner get back to your house you're not going out uh for sure you're not getting out of jail here uh you have to step back here to a8 a really beautiful move and now with the move bishop to e6 the rook is paralyzed basically to the to the eighth rank as we said if you ever leave the eighth rank then you could probably get checkmated on the back rank so in my opinion beautiful beautiful game here by stockfish 15 so a3 we have bishop to a2 bishop to e2 king to g2 king to g3 bishop to e4 you see black is playing just some moves but these are dubious moves um, they're not doing anything the rook is paralyzed as we said the king is paralyzed we have bishop to d5 bishop to c2 and this is really a beautiful immortal tzutzwang position here for uh for white it's an immortal tzutzwang really like alpha zero uh, used to play back in 2018 we have rook j6 bishop to d1 now stockfish grabs another pawn bishop to f3 bishop to c4 bishop to c6 again a couple of attacks here bishop to d5 was played bishop Bishop to c8 and after move bishop to b3 actually also uh, here the seer engine resigned of course we can immediately pick up here uh the pawn and 
there's nothing that can be done we'll just get the queen into the game we we'll just start to push this pawn and also notice that this pawn is also uh, here on the light score so uh, in this position as we said after move the bishop to b3 the seer engine resigns so great game i think we had many cool moments um, great sacrifice uh, then the exchange to minor pieces for the rook many of us would not um, uh, would not play the game like this um, then the rook lift on on d7 uh, waiting not immediately trading off uh, the pieces waiting what black to push the pawn to c4 then also the move a4 that split the pawn chain uh, not didn't allow of course black to come back into the game with the king incredible incredible position game here by stockfish uh so far really one of the most beautiful games that i've seen in my life so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot really cool ideas in the, the queens in the defense uh, if you want to see more immortal chess games like this check out our coverage of our common chess games played by computers here's the uh, link to our playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say Chess is the best, of course.